You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to a special edition of Shelby County Schools Report. I'm Avery Moore. And I'm Scarlett Simpson. Today we've assembled some of our most memorable teacher features and faces of SCS, highlighting educators right here in Shelby County. The show is jam-packed today, so let's head to our first classroom. Just spend a few minutes watching Ken Bain teach, and it becomes obvious that this is someone who loves what they do. SCSR reporter Sarah Mayers had a chance to visit the Grandview Heights Middle School Music and Media teacher and found out he is just as passionate about his students and their education. What we're going to do is, is go over the lesson that you guys had um, last Tuesday before we left for the break. Inside this classroom at Grandview Heights Middle School, it may not look like it, but musical magic is happening. Combining music and today's media, Teacher Ken Green has created a class you won't find anywhere else in Shelby County. Music and Media is a class I've developed over several years of working here in Shelby County Schools. It's uh, sort of a hybrid course combining uh, the best of general music in terms of composition, uh, performance, uh, a lot of the literacy pieces, uh, reading and writing music. We do drama exercises, we um, study rhythms and different patterns of music, we um, annotate forms, and we do kind of notations of music. It's really fun. This class gives students a hands-on experience. In today's technology, like this iPad, they're able to express their vocal and musical performances. We learned about the drum circle, how to put the beats in formation. We learned a lot about Africa too. The world drumming part of the class goes back to that first year as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we didn't have a, a lot of resources in the classroom at that time, and one of the first things I was able to get was a set of world drums. The drums are actually their desk, which is really cool, because each child has a drum. Faculty members say, since he's been at Grandview Heights, Ken Green has changed the way they view traditional learning. What I've learned from Ken Green is to uh, think out of the box and actually look to recraft the box. Class can take on a different definition when we redefine what we have students doing with our classroom. Does this poem tell you something about, about the content? I think he pushes the envelope as far as what we're supposed to teach the kids listed on the curriculum. Besides being creative, one of the main goals of the class is to apply lessons to other academic classes and vice versa. He redefines possibility. You know, a lot of students, you know, they find out music's on their schedule, like music. Oh, but this is not your typical music class. This is a music class that uh, involves everything from politics to uh, literature uh, in a realistic and relevant way uh, that, again, captures the interest and imaginations of, of students. Who would not love having that on your staff? And Green says he loves knowing that what he is doing will impact his students for the rest of their lives. I, I want them to realize uh, through the work we do here uh, that you know, they have their own voice. For Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Sarah Mayers. The Holocaust is one of the most horrific periods in human history. It can be a hard lesson to teach in school. It demands a high level of sensitivity and keen awareness of the complexity of the subject matter. As SESR reporter Dee Dee Noel found out, teacher Sandra Boyer is not afraid to tackle the topic head on. 
So he wasn't accepting people. He put them into death camps. When it comes to teaching the Holocaust, Central High School teacher Sandra Boyer is in her element. I've always had an interest in anything historical. World War II is very, you know, it's a very important part of our history. And the Holocaust is, is something that's always interested me. Innocent people were being killed. Your family members were being killed. Should we have gotten involved in this? The Holocaust is so important to Boyer, she incorporates the topic into all her classes and has even invited survivors to talk to her students. She's really excited and enthusiastic and passionate about history and trying to make history come alive to her kids. That passion is one of the reasons Boyer was one of three teachers to receive the 2017 Bell's Lippman Holocaust Educator Award given by the Tennessee Holocaust Commission. I am humbled. I am honored. I do not believe I necessarily deserve it because there are so many wonderful teachers in our system that deserve this honor. She's truly worthy of it. I mean, we're excited for her. It, it obviously reflects well on the school. He wasn't accepting people. He put them into death camps. Colleagues say it's her unique approach to teaching the Holocaust that wins over students and helps them open up. She trusts them and she's uh, respectful to them and that same respect comes back. How can people with privilege make a difference to take that privilege away or should we take privilege away? She connects well with her students because she's real with them. Um, she's a very genuine person. She's a little weird and a little off and I think that shows that uh, you're able to open up and be real with somebody. With the help of the organization Facing History and Ourselves, Boyer has been able to develop a curriculum that is eye-opening, challenging, and relatable to her students. The Holocaust is so graphic, it's easy to catch someone's attention through the graphic imagery or video of the camps or of how people were treated. But I like to talk about stories. I, I feel like I'm a storyteller, and so I'll take a story and I'll lead them down a road. I'll take them from beginning to end. And I believe that affects students more than anything else. It's through these stories that Boyer tries to instill life lessons in her students. I wanted my students to be more caring. I wanted them to be open, to understand that there's so many people throughout history that's been oppressed and mistreated. That's why there's so much conflict sometimes. I've definitely realized a lot about looking at my fellow man and being understanding of their story and knowing that whoever they are in that time and place that you met them is crafted through their past. Teachers like Ms. Boyer are what makes Central High School one of the most well-known schools in Shelby County. She strives for her students to walk out of her class with an understanding of our culture society and develop a compassion for justice. If any child is being hurt, then it's our business. She taught us not to sit by. She taught us we should change the world instead of just, you know, what we used to do, sit by, watch people, you know, stand up and say something. I won't say I was closed-minded before Miss Boyer, but taking her classes and listening to her and her opinions and uh, just that mindset kind of changed me uh, probably for the rest of my life. Reporting for Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Deborah like Noel. The way educators teach has changed a lot in the past 50 years. And one of Shelby County principals has been there every step of the way. Let's meet Margaret McKissick-Larry, principal of Avon Lennox School, in this month's Faces of SCS. You'll be leaving us pretty soon now. You got We gotta be sure you know all of the safety signs. I was born into a very, 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 very creative family. My mom, born in Batesville, Mississippi, back in the day uh, in Mississippi, if you were smart, you got a chance to teach. So she was kind of a teacher in a one-room school. Education was all around us. We had no choice. It's your, one of your favorite books, I see a smile. She never stopped being a teacher. You're talking well over 50 years of experience. I'm with the kids all the time. On Fridays when they have their uh, incentive dance, when they've been good all week, uh, I'm in there dancing with them. So I'm, I'm with them, that's what I like. We're a family here. Keep that in mind. We are here for whom? The for the students, always. I like Miss Larry because she's my favorite principal. She's like a grandmother figure to me. She brings out the joy up in Avon Lakes.
every day um, my brain is working. I'm trying to be creative. I'm trying to think of ways to make things better. We'll do a whole activity. That's farm. On the farm. Our students are very unique. They come in with a special set of skills. Uh, we're working on the skills that sometimes, you know, our students might not have been thought of. Separating food group items as healthy or unhealthy. We know what they need, so therefore we provide that, you know, for each and every kid. You will not see them reading a book as you would in a regular class. Uh, you would see them using the smart board. You would see them using manipulatives. And a lot of our kids are nonverbal, so we have to learn how to communicate with them, which we do. <laughs> oh, they love her. They're, you ought to see the way their faces lights up when they're unloading the buses in the morning. They come up the uh, bus walk and she greets them and they run and hug her. She does everything she can for these students. And they know when she comes in that she's not just the principal, she's somebody that cares about them. She talks to them. She never treats them as anything else other than an adult. But I always tell them, you are a kid to me. <laughs> and they, they accept it. They are really great. If she went to another school, it won't be like Avon Lennox School anymore. I found that if I surrounded myself with people who were uh, committed to taking care of the kids, then we could make it. I've never seen a teacher she couldn't get along with, not one, I really haven't. I wouldn't call her strict, but she can be very demanding and she knows what she needs to get done. The things on here are, of course, deadlines, and you know we meet deadlines, right? In our meetings, we exchange ideas and, and share uh, successes and failures too. <laughs> she pushes us to no end to get every degree we can get. She just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on until you finally relent and say, okay, okay, I got it, I'm going. I think she's wonderful. I've never had a principal like her in my life. I love coming to work. I love meeting the kids and just feeling the joy that they have and having a place that's safe for them. I'm just thrilled to have been a part of her staff for as long as I have. And I want her to stay as long as she can. People are always asking, Margaret, well, when are you going to retire? Why should I? Hello and welcome to Cable Quiz. The academic. Do you know how incredible it is to work at a TV station in high school? GHS TV is a student run television station. There's so many things you can do here at GHS TV. You can be in front or behind the camera or both. You have that opportunity. There are no limits. Well, we have sports and we have news and we have entertainment. So the students here get a well-rounded view of what it's like to be in the TV field. It's my life. It's what I want to do. From all of us here at GHS TV, thanks for starting your morning with us. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. Our program here integrates all the disciplines. Teachers and students have a very um, close connection with one another and that's how we work and communicate. It's completely creative that they get to essentially design their own lessons. I think it's great to be a part of this program because you get to have a very close relationship with your teachers as well as your peers. Making art is self-discovery and the world without art is a world without art. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Coach Rodney Salisbury of Whitehaven High School made waves last year when the Tigers won their second 6A state title. When he's not coaching one of the top football teams in the state, he's making a difference in the classroom. His dedication to both students and athletes is why he was our Teacher of the Month. All right, let's go. Last one, last one, last one. Kick off left, kick off left. As a coach, you're a teacher, and as Good a teacher, job. you're Good coaching job. students, so you're I think they're uh, intertwined. White Haven High School's Rodney Salisbury wears two different distracted. hats. There's his teaching hat. It's going to exactly be 15. All right, so if you put five, five in there to be 15, if you put five in there, it'll also be. And his coaching hat. The only way somebody should be coming clean is one of them gunners slacking. 
Coach Salisbury has been teaching Algebra 1 to 9th graders for nearly 20 years. He says growing up he never thought he'd end up teaching, but one experience made him fall in love with it. But when I graduated, uh, I graduated college, I worked with the Upper Bound program at Lemoyne Owen College, working with high school students, and I just fell in love with the process of teaching and seeing the light bulb go off in kids' minds when they're learning concepts. As for coaching, he was born to do that. As I look back, uh, strategy was something I was always into. Uh, I like playing with little G.I. Joe men. I had a whole box of them. We like to strategize, set up plays and do things and draw on plays and notebooks. Coach Salisbury yeah, takes his own experiences and uses them to push students and his athletes to be their best go, self. He's a, he's a father figure to people. Like you can look up to him. Teaches us right from wrong. Some, some people don't do that. Some people really don't care so. Coach, Coach Salisbury is one of those type of guys that cares. He, he wants to develop you not only as just a football player, as a student, but as just a person who's humane in society and very active. The Whitehaven Tigers have had a lot of success on the field, but Coach Salisbury personally makes sure his athletes are making the grades. So they understand that school is the most important thing they do. Athletics is something they do outside of that. He makes sure we have all our work done before we even touch the field. And just to have a Coach Dix want you to succeed off the field as well as on the field is great. Uh, Coach Salisbury always preaches the fact to use athletics as a vehicle of change. Use athletics uh, to be a way to pay for your college. Both coach and team have been recognized across the state within the past year. The Whitehaven football team brought home the state championship last football season, while Coach Rodney Salisbury was honored as a 2016 Tennessee Titans football coach of the year. I'm humble that way where I know that accolades are going to come to me because I'm the head of the organization, but I know that I don't get there by myself. Uh, obviously having good players helps a whole lot, but also having a great staff around you, having a great support system. That support system includes his wife and children. My wife is involved in everything we do. She's involved with our booster organization, uh, but it definitely is a stress and strain on the time. But when you're doing something you love, it's not really that much stress. When asked if there is another state championship on the horizon, Coach Salisbury equated it with math. Let them know there's a process and a procedure to getting to get into the solution or getting to what you want. Uh, so we let them know if you do the proper things and you follow the right steps, you can have success. Reporting for Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Avery Moore. This month, we are saluting downtown elementary school principal Deborah Martin for her service to her students and country. Principal Martin served in the U.S. Army for more than 20 years. In 2004, she came to Shelby County Schools and has used her skills to lay a foundation for her students' futures. Here's her story in this month's Faces of SCS. Good morning, downtown skyscrapers. Happy Friday. Of course, we're... I have hit the lottery. To have her wisdom, and she's already imparted in me so many different protocols and procedures to help me have a successful year, it has truly been amazing. She's kind, patient, and um, well thought out. Because one thing that I learned is that when we respect students, they respect us. Yeah. She has a wonderful, interesting background with military. During my recruiting years, I spent a lot of time in the schools. And it was at that point that I fell in love with the students and realized that what I wanted to do next was to go into the field of education. So she's not the stereotypical military person that I have known. I told them my story and I told them about my military background so that they would understand. Going from a field where it's mostly males to a field where it's mostly females, it's, it's, it's different and it's a challenge for me. I welcome it, actually. I really do welcome her experience that she has, you know, serving our country. She means business, but can present it in a way that the children um, respond to her well. Every time we need help, she all, she is always there for us, and when we and when we are hurt, she she always takes care of us. Miss Martin is the best because she, every time we come in, she hugs and greets us. I'm not an office desk person who likes to sit behind a desk, and so to have a challenging day, to have something to do throughout the day that's meaningful, that's purposeful, making sure, and to just be serving and helping, uh, that, that's what really just makes my day. This woman that I work for is such an advocate for children, and when she interacts with them, she, you know, she's loving with them. She speaks to them in a tone that's very respectful. She doesn't yell and scream at the children. If they're being inappropriate, she's also gonna be stern with them. She's very strict. She doesn't play when people do. 
have bad behavior. She's sweet, but she's also nice. What I realized with the smaller children is that if you reach them when they're young and you can help them at that point, then by the time they get to high school, then they are ready for life. She also has high expectations for her teachers. She has this thing that says, don't sweat the small stuff. As a principal, um, and as, as a leader here, you know, I can teach you instructional strategies, you know, I can teach you management skills, and I can help you by modeling for you, you know, how to teach children. But the most important thing that you should have is a heart for children, and you should love children and love people. How is he feeling? Sad. Sad. She wanted us to make sure that we had that time with the students to bond. Just to be like a four-year-old and not see color, or you know, not see um, um, this, this society, or not see that society, or not see this background, or this culture, or that culture. And to just see everybody as people and to love everybody, that's my hope for the world. That's my real hope for the world. From stage to classroom and vice versa, Germantown High School's Billy Pullen has spent nearly 25 years doing the two things he loves the most, teaching and acting. His passion to his crafts has paid off. Mr. Pullen is a national award-winning teacher and award-winning playwright, and that's why we named him our Teacher of the Month. When she says that Linus was killed in a place where three roads meet, and at the store's going, you know, and she says, where, where? Oh, something at Focus, where the road extends to Bell's High and Orion. And then that's when he begins to almost lose it. Some people say I'm not the traditional English teacher, and I think that's a compliment. For 25 years, Billy Pullen has called Germantown High School home. During his time there, he's taught everything from speech and acting to debate and English. I have IB Junior English. I have four sections of that this year, and this year I also have a class in AP Language and Composition and I have a class in creative writing. He's racked up multiple local, state, and national teaching awards. And while teaching is his career, it doesn't define him. Mr. Pullen is also a published playwright and actor. New Moon, an independent theater company, did Hamlet in February, and I played uh, Polonius. Whoa, Mr. Bob, Pullen's nice passion for theater I'm and fine. literature bleeds into his lessons. The theater background, which I taught for quite a while before I taught English, uh, comes in handy. Mr. Pullen often uses his theater background in his classes, bringing characters and books to life through theater exercises. Wake up, Phoebe. Holden? Holden, when did you get home? I remember back when we were learning about Oedipus from our summer work, he was always in character about Oedipus and Jocasta. During Huck Finn, he'll read out some of the lines and he'll really... It, shows that he's passionate about theater and English. This leads to a very lively classroom. You can just walk down the hall and hear his class going on and, and it's so lively and, and there's so much so much going on in his classes and it's all because of his personality. And we're laughing and we're learning at the same time. The class seems to go by rather quickly. They're always talking about the weather. I wouldn't say it's a theme. And while students are having fun learning, Mr. Pullen is pulling the writer out of them. Phrase that you don't need, that's why you're putting it in commas. He has the ability of being able to uh, pull out the writing styles of his students and to see who actually has the ability to be a good writer. And then he motivates them and, and nurtures them. When, when you feel like they actually get something, whether it's a moment in literature, uh, whether you see their writing improve, uh, they finally get it. After 25 years, there's no stopping Mr. Pullen. Most people in my age range have retired. Uh, I'm not ready to do that because I still like it. And people say, up, you if you still really up? love it, you might as well keep doing it. Reporting for Shelby County 100. Schools Report, I'm and Scarlett I was Simpson. Hoping that if it does go over, you need to go back and see if you can edit your quote. Darla Young is in her second year as principal of Haven View Middle School. While she is inspiring young minds inside the school, it's her work outside those walls that has been getting most of the attention lately. She's a foster mom and has fostered more than 50 kids. It's a master class in love, learning, and life in this month's Spaces of SES. I am a Whitehaven gal girl. Um, I still live in Whitehaven area. My parents' house has always been the children's house. We did that in high school. Everybody goes to my parents' house, and it's never a quiet house. I don't like quiet houses. So then after they started doing foster care, and then um, I bought a house in 2009, and I said, oh, this house is too big. 
So then by that time I said, oh, I'll just start with one. And then that one kind of led to two, and that two kind of led to three or four because some of them had children or they were pregnant with children. So that's how my numbers grew. And um, I've had it almost at least six to seven in the house at one time. She just want to be loved. She just a baby. I think it's kind of crazy, but I think it's a great thing because it shows her passion and her commitment to the community. I'll eat your dinner. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're not. Uh -huh. mm -mm. For a lot of kids, she is the parent that they may not have at home. What's wrong? Because you don't even look right. What's wrong? I have to teach it and be a parent both ways. So just to divide them two, no, because it's a parent teaching 24 hours a day. But you want to go to your locker in the morning and in the evening. She'll bring everything with you. To me, it would be amazing to see how she does it all between all those children at home that need her attention and then all the children here that need her attention and then all the staff that needs her attention. It's just amazing that she can do all of that. I may get a phone call at 7 in the morning, I may get a phone call at 7 o'clock at night, and I may get one at midnight and say, we need a place for this child to come. And nine times out of 10, I say yes. You should stay awake for the next six hours. <laughs> then your mama can go to sleep. She's fostered over 50 plus children in the years that she's been doing that. So that again, that speaks to her heart and her love of children. And I will take the, the rough ones. The ones that just need somebody to know I'm still going to love you and accept you for who you are, no matter what's told to me, whatever your background is, what you've been through, what you've been doing, doesn't matter. We're, we're going to figure this out. She's like a very loving person. And usually when you meet new people, they're hard to talk to. But when I met her, it was just like, she was like my second mom. She is very soft-spoken, but she means what she says, and she says what she means. Because the kids know when she says something, it's law. She is an amazing person, far, by far one of the best I've seen. I haven't did it by myself. I, I can never take all the credit for it. My colleagues have been like, so much support. Right, so we need that. She can only teach sixth grade, because she's a K through six. So it's been like a very big uh, collaborative uh, family thing. Fostering is an amazing opportunity an amazing thing for somebody to do for the community because there's so many children that don't have a loving home and to be able to provide them with one and listening with Ms. Young's stories about her foster children that she has had over the years has made me interested in becoming a foster parent myself. If you love children you're going to want them around you every day and you're going to want to help them be better and if they don't have anyone to do that you're going to want to take their role to help them be better in life. We all care about kids but that's that extra step and, and it just lets you know that her heart is truly in the right place. There's always a gift in every child and every person. The thing is we're just trying to find out what that gift is and I can't take everybody home and I know I'm crazy enough to take everybody home and I can't do it and it frustrates me because I can't take them. So it's not even about me, it's about helping this child succeed.